Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. A table lists a series of inputs and outputs. The input of one goes to the output of five. Two goes to the output of 10. Three goes to the output of 55. For the input value of 10, what is its output value? And what is the rule between the inputs and outputs? This question was given to gifted eight-year-old students, and I saw it on Reddit homework help. Many of the adults thought this was too hard of a question to give to eight-year-old students. In fact, some of them speculated there must be a typo in the question. The output value for three should not be 55. They speculated that it should instead be equal to 15. Then we would have a simple rule. The outputs would be equal to five times the inputs, which would mean that the output for 10 would be equal to 50. However, I don't think we can just say that it's a typo. But forget for a moment that this question was given to eight-year-old students. Just consider that we have this set of inputs and this set of outputs, and we want to determine a rule between them. What could the rule be, and what would the output value for 10 be? This is still a challenging and interesting question. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. As specified, there are actually infinitely many functions that could determine a rule between the inputs and outputs. Consider a general piecewise defined function f of x, where its value at 1 is equal to 5, its value at 2 is equal to 10, its value at 3 is equal to 55, and for all other x values, it's equal to some other function g of x. In that case, the function could even be undefined at the input value of 10. It could also be any value that we specify. So as stated, this problem could have an infinite number of solutions. But remember that it was given to gifted eight-year-old students. So we would instead be looking for a simple rule. In that case, imagine we're looking for a function that's a polynomial. Now we know that these three points don't all pass through the same line. So what kind of polynomial would we be looking for? Well, it's not a linear polynomial, it would be a quadratic polynomial. So consider a function f of x that's equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. From the given information, we're going to solve for the values of a, b, and c. f of one is equal to five. So we substitute that in f of 1 is equal to 5, which is equal to a multiplied by 1 squared plus b multiplied by 1 plus c. We'll then substitute for f of 2. f of 2 is equal to 10, and we'll substitute that x is equal to 2. We'll do the same thing for f of 3. We now have a system of three equations. Let's simplify each of these equations. f of 1 is equal to 5, which will be equal to a plus b plus c. f of 2 is equal to 10, which will be equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. f of 3 is equal to 55, which is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. Let's now solve this system of equations for a, b, and c. Let's subtract the following two equations and eliminate the c variable. We'll get that 5 is equal to 3a plus b. Now we'll take a copy of this first equation and subtract it from the equation that's equal to 55. This will also eliminate the C variable. We get 45 is equal to 5A plus B. If we take the equation on the left and then subtract it from this equation, we'll eliminate the B variable. So we get that 40 is equal to 2A, which means A is equal to 20. From here, we can go to the following equation and substitute in a is equal to 20. This means five is equal to 60 plus b, 
which means b is equal to negative 55. Then we have 5 is equal to a plus b plus c. We'll substitute for a and b, and we can solve that c is equal to 40. So we put this all together. We've solved for a, b, and c, and we had defined the function f of x as equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So we substitute in the values of a, b, and c. So f of x is equal to 20x squared minus 55x plus 40. Finally, we need to know what happens when x is equal to 10. We substitute x is equal to 10, and we carefully simplify this to get that f of 10 is equal to 1490. And that's the missing value. So what do you think? Was this a challenging problem for you? And did you have as much fun solving it as I did? Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.